If you're watching this video, it's safe to assume that you're probably aware of what YouTube is, one of the biggest video sharing platforms on the internet. And because of its huge size, there are plenty of creepy videos and content that slip through the cracks of the algorithm. Got some scary web series, some weird ominous videos, and of course, alternate reality games. But for this particular iceberg, it's not that creepy at all. Most of these entries are either not scary at all or just fake. Yeah, I know I got some fro action going on here. I just been too lazy to get a haircut recently. YouTube Easter eggs. There have been a lot of Easter eggs and little inside jokes that YouTube scattered around all over the site throughout its years of development. Of course, none of them are scary at all. Or are they? And to show you how not scary these Easter eggs are, we're gonna go over some real quick. One of them revolves around Technoblade, a Minecraft YouTuber who unfortunately passed away a few years back from cancer. If you were to search up Technoblade on the YouTube search bar, an error message would pop up where it says, did you mean Technoblade never dies? And then it links to YouTube's tribute to Technoblade, showcasing all the funny moments he had, and of course showing off the catchphrase, Technoblade never dies. There's also also that beam me up Scotty Easter egg that you're probably familiar with if you've been on YouTube for a while now. That's been like the most popular trivia about YouTube. Did you know that if you type beam me up Scotty, it'll do the Star Trek thing and your research results will do the beaming thingy. If you were to search up 301 views on the YouTube search bar, all of the videos would show up as 301 views, which refers to an old YouTube bug that we'll talk about later. And it's also a Doge meme Easter egg if you search up Doge meme in the YouTube search box. You could also render YouTube in ASCII if you searched up slash geek week in the search bar. There were a lot of Easter eggs throughout YouTube's history. I don't know if all of them still work. I know most of the old Easter eggs have been deactivated, so they don't really work. All we got are videos just showcasing them. Spam bots. This has been an issue on YouTube for such a very long time. This iceberg should honestly be renamed to the hugest YouTube issues iceberg because it lists out a lot of the stupid issues that YouTube refused to ever fix or deal with. And one of these refers to spam bots. If you ever look at your favorite YouTube videos, there are probably a lot of comments stating, click on this link to win a free prize or $19 Fortnite card. Something about finding Jesus and you know, your typical check out my OnlyFans 18 plus. Oh, mwah. they also try to impersonate famous YouTubers to trick viewers into clicking these things, thinking that they're doing some sort of giveaway. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that have fallen for these fake links and spam bots where they would unfortunately either lose some money or worse, get their identity stolen. And most of them can be just straight up just annoying, like spamming weird shit and copy pastas and all that. Lately, there've been a lot of YouTubers directly addressing the spam bot issue, which has led to YouTube actually making tools to deal with it, such as updating their algorithm so it would automatically delete these spam comments. There's also a new setting when you upload a video where you could increase the strictness that this algorithm has against comments and for the most part it's been kind of working there are some false positives with the comments and of course there are still some spam bots that circumvent these filters and are still popping up on the comment feed i mean at least for me lately the comments have been pretty chill there haven't been that much spam although now that i mention it i bet there's gonna be a shit ton of spammers now in the comments because of how huge this platform is there are gonna be a couple of ominous, mysterious, and suspicious users on the tubes of you. But I think this entry is specifically referring to this one who has the username Angel404. And some of their most popular videos includes compilations of creepypastas and showcasing a Cartoon Network hijacking. There's really much scary stuff that's happening on this channel. I mean, that creepypasta compilation can be a little creepy and like their banner and their overall image is a very mysterious, especially the fact is that it's a channel with no name that has almost one and a half million subscribers. And the reason why I think this YouTuber has been getting a lot of views and attention is that they've been really finessing the recommendations algorithm. I've personally seen this channel on my recommended and all of their videos get millions of views. So there's gotta be a reason why. People have pointed out 
that this channel has done a lot of community posts and there was a little glitch back then with the algorithm where if you had a lot of engagement in your community posts that get that get a lot more engagement on your channel which leads to more people checking out your videos and watching them i think youtube did fix this algorithm glitch but this channel has still remained super popular to this day i don't think there's any malicious intent or evil behind this channel i think it's just some person who was able to finesse the youtube algorithm and take advantage of a glitch to get some views and attention which hey i respect that man question mark exclamation point reverse to a video with 25 million views and just watching the video itself it's just super mundane it's just someone playing mario kart wii as funky kong on rainbow road and they're doing some sick tricks some ultra shortcuts and speed running tactics before they fuck up and they fall off course the description contains some Japanese, which translates to even if you dash at a point like this, you won't reach it. So it's probably not practical. And again, this is another one of those algorithm anomalies. Like how did this simple video of Mario Kart Wii get 25 million views? And the weird thing is you can't even search up this video. Typing in question mark exclamation point in the YouTube search bar results in not this video at least the easiest way to search up this video is to know the channel that uploaded it 121kn you could just search their name up on youtube and you would be able to find the video easy peasy and some in the comments are just sarcastically lauding this video calling it a masterpiece with a compelling narrative and a perfect climax and everything and other commenters are talking about how this video is sort of like a time capsule of what YouTube used to be back in the simpler times where people could just upload like whatever they want. Now they have to deal with search engine optimization, thumbnails, high quality editing, pacing and all that shenanigans. I mean, it's possible that this video isn't even meant to be public because based on how mundane it is and the description, it could be just some player wanting to send this video personally to a friend and I guess they messed up the settings or something. And as for the reason why this video is impossible to search up on YouTube, apparently the question mark and exclamation point that's used in the title is actually from a Japanese keyboard. And I don't know the technical jargon of why it's different. I, I think it's like something with like the syntax between a Japanese keyboard and an English keyboard being different. I don't know. But that's mostly the reason why it's uh, difficult to find because it just looks like simple punctuation, but it's actually Japanese punctuation. Back in the early days of YouTube, there used to be this glitch where uh, new videos that would quickly gain views would be stuck at 301 views for like a couple of hours. And it sort of just became a YouTube inside joke, especially for like creators back in the time. And it was also a part of the Easter eggs that I mentioned earlier in this layer. And to basically explain why this glitch happened in the first place, I'm gonna hit y'all up with some number five because they give the best explanation on why videos would get stuck at 301 views in the first place. When you watch any video, like this one for example, you're probably not all watching it from the same server. It gets distributed all around the world. So there is, you know, with the original, which, which you will have uploaded, uh, I guess by the time you're watching this, have already uploaded, then this gets, what do you call, cached. Um, in different locations so that when you make a request for a video it doesn't need to travel all the way from from London you know over to California and say okay send me back all of these bytes way back here so with multiple copies of the video all around the world counting the views starts to get a little bit more complicated here's you at your uh, at your computer watching the video if you make a request to this server this server is going to give you the video right and at the same time this server is going to write a little message to a log. It's just one line in a log. Every once in a while, we, we collect all of these logs. So we'll ship this thing in from you know, Central Europe or whatever uh, into the central log collection area, aggregate them all together, and then go through and count them up. Well, okay, that seems simple enough, but it doesn't explain why the view counter freezes. Views, as mentioned, are a currency. When you have a video with, with a you know, very small amount of views, then you don't need to be too careful about what you know what that view was. However, once it gets to be you know above 300 and beyond, this currency we really need to verify and make sure that the number is what it purports to be. So this means that we have to go through a statistical verification process, uh, and that statistical verification process actually takes some time, uh, and thus we go from incrementing one by one to then saying, okay, 
Now we're incrementing in batch, and all of these views that have been added on have been uh, verified by YouTube to be real views. Uh, we are, are preventing things like um, you know, bots to go in and you know, add a bunch of views to a video, or we are, are preventing something that you know, may have perhaps uh, you know, misled someone into, into watching a, a video. Uh, you know, say you had a and these 301 view shenanigans ended around August 2015 as YouTube later finally fixed the glitch and 301 views became a faint memory for us old YouTubers back in the 2000s. Why is this on the iceberg? This is literally just the first YouTube video ever uploaded onto the platform. It just features co-founder Jawed Kareem standing in front of two elephants at the San Diego Zoo talking about their long trunks. That's it. That's, I mean, it's pretty cool that we know what the first YouTube video is. There really isn't anything scary about it. What's funny though, is that even though Kareem left YouTube a while ago, he still updates the description of this video to criticize YouTube's dumb decisions. Like back in November, 2013, when Google tried to make YouTube require a Google Plus account so you can comment on videos, he updated the description saying that he can't comment on the platform anymore because he doesn't want a Google Plus account. And then later on in November 2021, the video description was updated again to criticize YouTube's decision to remove dislikes from public view, stating whenever YouTube agrees that removing dislikes is a stupid idea, it probably is. Try again, YouTube. YouTube Adpocalypse. Okay, this is a very dark time to be a YouTuber. Back in like 2017, YouTube experienced something called a Adpocalypse, where basically just a bunch of advertisers just withdrew themselves from YouTube, which basically just caused YouTube to lose a shit ton of money. And this first Adpocalypse can be traced all the way back to 2016, when YouTube decided to drastically shift their focus to family-friendly content. And we're all too familiar with the state of family-friendly content on YouTube right now. But during this, uh, and the platform began penalizing channels that were more focused on adult humor, adult-oriented content, you know? Which is most of the content on this platform. Also, many people blame PewDiePie, the most subscribed YouTuber at the time, for causing the adpocalypse because he had anti-Semitic content. Like most people point out the video he made where he paid these Indian men on Fiverr to hold up a sign that says, uh, this. And you can imagine the shitstorm that caused, along with the many other controversies that PewDiePie would get himself into later on in his career. And because of the controversy surrounding him, PewDiePie got dropped from Maker Studios, Disney's digital entertainment and channel network. So just in short, people saw the biggest YouTuber making this kind of content and getting this much trouble with everyone, and they're like, uh-uh, I don't want that. Get me the hell out of here. So YouTube saw the money walking away and there's like, oh God, we gotta make this shit into Nick Jr. now. And that caused most of the channels on YouTube, which are like not kids content, to get demonetized, get the yellow dollar sign, get limited ads. So this caused more outrage with YouTube because being a full-time YouTuber was now unsustainable. It didn't help that later on YouTube would further update their policies, restricting the partner program where now you have to have more than a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch towers per year for just getting paid to make videos like this. And of course, this policy was met with a lot of controversy, especially for smaller creators that couldn't reach the new requirements. And it didn't help that the big guys were still doing dumb things that caused the adpocalypse to continue. One of the instances, of course, I'm talking about is the uh, Logan Paul forest, where he did a vlog in Japan where he visited Aokigatahara, also known as the suicide forest. And he thought, you know what? You know what's a good idea? Let's get me and my annoying friends to walk through this forest and see if we can like find dead bodies or something. And you know what happened? They found a dead body and he filmed it and he didn't even like blur it well. So millions of viewers 
who were mostly young kids because it's Logan Paul, just saw a dead corpse on YouTube. And of course, that caused another policy change that made the guidelines even more stricter on other YouTubers. And even recently, with the profanity policy change that was later made more relaxed so I can say fuck in front of my entire family so you can be like ashamed of me. You know, YouTube has been in a constant battle with policy changes to please advertisers and angering the actual people who make content on this platform and you know I, i'm i can imagine down in the future we're still going to complain about more dumb changes that youtube's going to do and it's just feel like going to be at a never-ending war with this So I sort of touched on this subject with the Elsa gate entry I talked about in my last iceberg video, but it's basically referring to the post Elsa gate content that happened and all of the shitty kid content that we're still experiencing right now on YouTube, despite their age restriction policies, somehow these videos would fly under the radar and even appear on YouTube Kids, the platforms YouTube made to protect kids from the shit. There's a huge sea of low effort educational quote unquote content where they would clickbait their titles to say like learn colors and all nursery rhymes so that parents just like glancing at their kid's iPad won't bat an eye. They would also plug in a shit ton of ads to get that sweet, sweet ad revenue. And they're probably making bank because these videos get millions of views from little sticky fingered kids on their iPad. And it got big to the point that even certain news media outlets were looking into Coco Melon, which is uh, responsible for many of the uh, mass animated videos aimed at kids on YouTube. In 2019, apparently the company that owned Coco Melon made $10 million a month in ad revenue. So the matter of whoever owned Coco Melon wasn't really that clear because although there was a company attached to it called Treasure Studio, there wasn't really much known about them. And it wasn't until Bloomberg News actually found the small team who were actually American and interviewed them on why they made Coco Melon, for which they just said that they simply want to entertain children and that they want to keep to themselves to avoid attention from any outsiders. And of course, that anonymity uh, led to concerns about what their actual true intentions were with the channel and like, you know, if they're actually qualified enough to make good kids content that's actually educational. So this is one of the most popular horror web series on the internet and there's a good chance you've probably seen it or watched an analysis video on Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. And having seen the whole series, I kind of recommend it, so I'm not gonna really spoil it for you. If this name sounds familiar, I'm sure you have seen it. So the series basically involves puppets going through like some of the most psychological horror and like weird comedy yet. And there's six episodes to the web series. To get the vibe of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, I'm just gonna go over the pilot episode. The first episode of which it has 75 million views. It's got some puppets sitting around a table having a jolly old time until a notebook begins to open up and start singing to them to get creative. How do you get the idea? I just try to think creatively. Now when you look at this orange, tell me please, what do you see? It's just a boring old orange. Maybe to you, but not to me. I see a silly face Whoa. walking along and smiling at me. I don't see what you mean. Cause you're not thinking creatively. And, you know, it seems like a bit you'd see on Nick Jr. Or on Disney Channel, you know, until things start to get a little strange. Go and collect some leaves and sticks and arrange them into your favorite color. Blue. Red. Green. Green is not a creative color. Let's get creative.
and yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it at that. If you're into this sort of mix of weird, surreal, dark humor and psychological horror, I recommend checking out the series for yourself. Finish this video, then check out this, then check out the series. So apparently searching up random emojis on the uh, YouTube search bar, if you just slam your hands on the keyboard, you'd find some kind of weird stuff. Uh, for example, you'd find videos like Ka Ka Cat Cat, uh, if food were people and the main characters of the emoji movie in real life You'd also get some really weird and nasty stuff like surgery videos and huge cysts exploding in the camera And there's also stuff related to the Elsa Gate stuff the shitty kid content that I talked about earlier It's possible that there's kids just smearing their hands all over their iPads you know just having this emoji searched up and they're probably watching all these videos because some of these videos in these results get a lot of views oh hey alan tutorials i talked about this entry way back in my first creepypasta iceberg it's a web series created by alan resnick who was involved in other stuff with adult swim and wham city comedy and he just summarized this entry because I've talked about it before. It involves Alan who makes video tutorials on weird and bizarre tasks like how to pick up a chair from the ground and how to crush a can of Dr. Pepper with a bunch of two by fours. And as the series goes on, Alan gets stranded and later gets captured to be forced to make these tutorial videos. It's a whole rabbit hole and a whole web series that you can watch the analysis video on or check out the series yourself. I talked more about it in my creepy pasta video and it's a good series to watch if you're feeling a little more melancholic, you wanna get a little depressed, especially with the themes of the, of the series, talking about how it criticizes people who wanna get views and attention online and how they're willing to do anything to get some. So this entry is referring to a specific spam bot. This one has been causing a little bit of trouble around the YouTube frontier. Apparently it's a bot called QT Perk. And apparently QT Perk is a bot where it attempts to impersonate Mr. Beast. And when also, if you check out their channel, they had a bunch of filler like Fortnite gameplay videos. And apparently those videos are actually re-uploads from another Fortnite YouTuber, Zarbi. They took advantage of the situation when Zarbi's channel was terminated and their videos couldn't be accessed for a while. So they basically just re-uploaded all of their videos pretending that they are Zarbi. So basically they're trying to trick young impressionable kids into thinking that they're legit Fortnite YouTubers and will try to scam them out of money. Obviously that didn't work out for them, especially when Zarbi came back with official channels. Um, it's unknown if this bot is still out and about loose in the comments. Okay, what the hell kind of conspiracy ass shit are we getting ourselves into in this video? You really think the government would give Mr. Beast like a hundred million dollars just to make funny little squid game parodies or like to start a fast food burger chain? This entry, they could, this entry could be talking about how Mr. Beast advocated for governments to step in to help cure cataract blindness. He made this statement after he made that viral video where he paid for cataract surgery for a thousand people and that whole controversy surrounding that video about how it's kind of weird champ for Mr. Beast to, to do like some weird philanthropic stuff and to make a whole big video with it. Some people took issues with the thumbnail, like the weird Photoshop thumbnail he always does. Most people have pointed out how it's sort of sad and depressing that it takes people like Mr. Beast and their generosity to actually give people life changing, you know, surgery procedures and they, they can't rely on their healthcare system and the government the whole Mr. Beast's blindness controversy is a huge rabbit hole. You know, I don't think Joe Biden is giving Mr. Beast a hundred million dollars to recreate Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in some bumfuck warehouse. Okay, let me get straight to the point with this entry. The actual host is not dead. So let me give you the rundown on this. So FPS Russia, also known as FPS Kyle, they were a popular YouTube channel where they would showcase a bunch of guns and firearms and explosions and all that cool stuff. So this channel was a huge success because, you know, seeing a Russian guy shooting guns is cool now. And it has almost 7 million subscribers. So where did he go? Why did they stop making these types of videos? Well, for one, FES Kyle actually went to jail for like a weed charge or something. 
and now he can't have guns because he has a criminal record but the main thing that i'm going to be talking about for this entry and i think this entry is referring to this it's keith rat Keith Ratliff was the co-owner of the FPS Industries and was a member of FPS Russia's production team. Because he had a federal firearms license, that meant he was the one responsible for giving Kyle all the firearms they actually use in the videos. In March 2013, Ratliff was found shot dead in his home in Carnesville, Georgia. Following Ratliff's death, the production of FPS Russia videos went on hiatus until February 2013. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation said that they were still investigating Ratliff's death. Unfortunately, there haven't been any official updates since the initial reports following Ratliff's death. And since then, there hasn't been any official resolution with the case, it went cold. So you know what that means. It became the subject of a bunch of wacky conspiracy theories. Most people believe that this was a result of a firearm deal gone wrong. Some people speculate that Ratliff was talking to some illegal firearms dealer and they didn't jive with what he was given, so they shot him dead. Some people claim that Ratliff was murdered by the anti-gun movement. You really think an anti-gun movement would use a gun to kill someone? And of course, the cherry on top of all these conspiracy theories, the government did it. Yes, sir, those fucking sizzly liberals with their soft hands trying to get my guns away from me. Web driver torso. So this is referring to a YouTube automated performance testing account that became popular in 2014 after some people came across it and saw the videos and were like, what the fuck is that? So these videos are like pretty weird and abstract and mysterious. You know, got a bunch of shapes and weird jokes featuring on the video. And many people who came across it didn't know that it was actually just a test account that was created by Google to make sure that their platform was actually displaying these uh, slide, these uh, videos correctly. So when it first gained the spotlight in 2014, many people speculated on what these videos actually meant. And then of course, YouTube later came out and said that it was just an internal testing utility. So that's it. Monster School is a popular Minecraft animation series. The whole premise of it is that it's a class of Minecraft mobs trying to learn how to be like a monster properly. And their teacher's Herobrine. The series was first created by YouTube channel Willcraft, who started the series almost a decade ago. And you know, for what's worth, the original series wasn't even that bad. It had that early machinima charm to it, you know? And because of the popularity, like this shit got millions of views. There are plenty of garbage knockoffs that would do Elsagate S tactics and clickbait to farm views and attention from kids. And there's also a channel called Monster School, which has almost 4 million subscribers, where it's run by some Russian guy. It has some of the weirdest shit I've seen on YouTube yet. Should your kids watch this? No! Obedece a la morse. Also known as Obey the Walrus. It was a video first uploaded in 2007. And basically it's just trying to be like super creepy and all that, you know? The video got taken down and was later re-uploaded by David Nunez, which has over 6 million views. They also wrote about how the original maker was a controversial YouTuber under the name Obey the Walrus. Now to give some context about the actual video, the person in this video is Sandy Crisp, also known as the Goddess Bunny. She was a transgender woman and a drag queen who contracted polio shortly after her birth. And you know, she was really... You know, she's definitely one of the most prominent figures of disabled trans celebrities in Hollywood. Chris was subject to malpractice from multiple doctors, which further disfigured her body. Some other details about the video, apparently that loud ass audio of the kids singing is actually a Spanish dub of a Barney episode. And apparently they're singing the itsy bitsy spider in Spanish. And the clips were taken from the Goddess Bunny's movie that her son filmed. And the various reaction videos and comments that people left in this video was because of the lack of context to the video. Not many people understood what the hell was going on, you know? You know, of course that later made this video super controversial because it's basically just pointing out how disfigured Goddess Bunny was and making that the shock factor of that video it's kind of fucked up Sally Fingers refers to a British animated web series created by David Frith 
in 2004. The whole premise of it is basically there's Salad Fingers. He's this thin green guy who has some mental problems and he lives in this super apocalyptic world. And the series has been around for a while now. There have been a lot of episodes made in the series, but there have been a lot of videos analyzing the series and talking about the themes and nuances of each episode. So to get the real vibe of this series, I'm going to summarize the first episode of this series. We got Salad Fingers, his nice little crack shack, and he's going on his whole spiel about how he likes to touch Rust with his nice Salad Fingers. <laughs> I like to touch them. <laughs> the feeling of rust against my salad fingers is almost orgasmic. <laughs> the crude animation, you know, salad fingers strange appearance and the awkward high-pitched British accent really adds to the eeriness of this show. But it's not enough. He needs to find the perfect spoon. Naturally, he just hits up the town and, you know, asks his little boy at his home if he has any spoons. Naturally, that causes the boy to scream. So Sally Fingers is like, you know what, let's do a little bit of home invasion, you know, further terrifying the kid. Uh, no spoons could be found in his home, but he did find a nice little rusty kettle to rub his nice long juicy salad fingers on. Then the video abruptly ends. See, that's a nice taste of the horror that this series has. And there are 12 episodes in the web series. And it was one of the first popular horror animations and showcased the potential of actually good horror content on the internet. Suicide Mouse, this is a classic creepypasta. I have no goddamn idea why this on this iceberg. It's not like a creepy YouTube exclusive thing, you know? I mean, I guess it's on here because there's a lot of recreations. Anyway, Suicide Mouse, also known as SuicideMouse.avi, is a black and white cartoon featuring a looped animation of Mickey Mouse just walking down some buildings, accompanied by this actually creepy piano music that still terrifies my mind to this day. And as the video loops for a couple of minutes, it eventually introduces a distorted scream in the video, which people thought was real at first, you know? And as his screaming audio gets super loud, it, it cuts to black, shows the classic Disney ending card, and the video ends. And I'm gonna be honest, the music, the screaming, and that weird janky Mickey animation, it is kind of unnerving to just watch that in the darkness, and like you start to see things in the corner of your eye because it's pitch black. It, it's a little freaky, it's a little freaky, even though there's not really much to it. In 2011, a video uploaded onto YouTube showing a man named Patrick talking to a camera. This video called Walter I Got a Girlfriend just sat dormant for years. Hi Walter, I was at the mall today and guess what happened? I met the most wonderful girl. We went shopping at JCPenney's and she tried on a lot of clothes. And she ended up buying a whole lot of them, you know what I mean? And then we decided to go and take a look at some of the jewelry at K Jewelers and she picked out this most awesome necklace, that I've, the most amazing necklace I've ever seen. And I, I know she wanted me to buy it for her because she kept on looking at me and kept on giving me that look, you know the look. And then we got kind of tired of the mall and I brought her back to my place. And I know, I know she hates cameras, Walter, but I'm going to show you her anyways. You ready? It wasn't until 2016, 2017, where people started to find this video, watch it, get absolutely terrified of what this means, and you know, start investigating. At first, many people thought that this was like a fake video, and that this guy was trying to start some alternate reality game or something, or just like acting like a creepo for views and attention. However, most people saw this video, 
and suggested that this actually might be a real case of a disappearance. In particular, the disappearance of Caleb Berg. Berg went missing on August 11th, 2009 at the age of 15, which was two months before this video was originally uploaded onto YouTube. And apparently, most people, including Berg's mother, thought that the girl showcased in the video had a strong resemblance to Kayla. Quote, sounded like Kayla, looked like her. It gave me chills. It's hard to explain, Sperger told the Associated Press. The video made me sick to my stomach, literally. Soon after, Antigua police announced that they were going to track down the person and the girl in this video to see if they actually had connections to Kayla's disappearance. Even the FBI got involved with the investigation, and many big news outlets and YouTubers started talking about the whole situation. YouTube even nuked the original video because they thought it was a legit kidnapping being showcased. So what happened? Well, the Antigua police department made a statement on Facebook claiming that the video was was fake. They contacted the producer and the two actors who played Patrick and the kidnapped girl, which did confirm that the video was fake, it was not an actual kidnapping, and that was not Caleb Berg. In fact, the actors and producers were actually from upstate New York. They claimed that it was not their intention to cause any harm, and that the media construed this film into thinking it was a real kidnapping. Unfortunately, the disappearance of Caleb Berg is about to reach the 14 year mark, and there still isn't any given reason on why Berg disappeared, so. Try FG. So there's an entire Nexpo video on this entry where he thoroughly explains this rabbit hole and how it, in May 2019, a 4chaner stumbled upon a bizarre search term that led to an extremely convoluted rabbit hole. According to this 4chan post, they apparently just typed out and slammed their keyboard a bunch of random characters because they're just bored. And when this slamming of the keyboards resulted in a search term, Try GF, they searched for it, got nothing, but then they clicked the back button on their browser, and the suggestions they got were very, very strange. They then proceeded to slam their hand on the keyboard again to see if they get those weird suggestions again, and nothing really worked until they tried switching G and F to spell out try F G. And what they found was this video clip, which was re-uploaded six times by six different accounts. Now, after this 4chan post and other posts on Reddit and Twitter, many people began investigating the search term and even recorded these weird suggestions they'd get. And they'd also investigate the six channels that uploaded that Try FG clip. And most of the videos are various from each other, like, one of them is some weird, morbid interpretation of an Elsagate video, and then the other ones are just cryptic ARG-like videos. And that's where I'm gonna leave it at that. If this sounds kind of interesting to you, I highly recommend the next part of the video. There are also plenty of other videos where they recap the events, and it is a pretty creepy entry in and of itself if you want to look down that abyss. Okay, username 666, another classic YouTube horror. This is a video where it showcases a YouTube user trying to find the channel username 666 on YouTube. So the person in the video, they put in the URL youtube.com slash username 666 and we press enter, but no results show up until they constantly click the refresh button. Then the YouTube channel page starts to decay into this twisted fleshy red mass and soon enough the youtube channel username 666 popped up on their screen and then they checked out the channel which and i just want to preface this this one is pretty spooky if you've never seen it before here's a timestamp if you want to skip that uh enjoy Yeah, so I just want to point this out if 
you're like super scared to look up username 666 it's not a real video okay it's actually made by a youtube channel called nana825763 and you know what they're a pretty good horror video artist i've seen their terrifying videos back in 2010 and they've made some really good shit. They made a sequel to username 666 called Another YouTube. And they also have a video called My House Walkthrough, which is actually freaky as fucking Friday, dude. I recommend this channel. I recommend their Minecraft YouTube playthrough too, because like you just watch it and it's just some quirky Japanese guy behind this. So yeah, so this entry is talking about Saudi Arabia police encounter a real witch. And okay, I'm gonna be honest, this looks like shit you'd find in a low effort top 15 scary video list. Like, just, just look at this video clip. Oh, no. I mean, it could be real. It could be a witch with like a twisted ankle or something. I don't fucking know. I don't know why she's just waddling towards the trunk. She's just limping towards it. If it is fake, the actor that played the police officer did sound kind of convincing. He did sound like he was in genuine fear. I mean, what's stopping from just capping the fucking witch in the head if he believed it was an actual witch? I don't know, maybe she got some like potion of healing or something. That was such a lame ass joke. Shay St. John is a fictional character in our project who appears in a series of surreal, campy, weird horror campy videos. This character was created by Eric Fournier, where she's given a backstory of how she was a supermodel who was disfigured in a train accident. And because of her trauma and her desire to want to stay beautiful, she decided to rebuild her entire body with a collection of mannequin parts and masks. And just out of context, just stumbling upon the video, it is pretty creepy to watch these videos of just her and like her puppets going absolutely batshit crazy. And at first, some people believe this was actually a real care, like a real person, a real supermodel who actually got disfigured in an accident. Of course, many people realized that it was a creative piece of art and began to understood the surreal horror comedy that Fournier was showcasing. And it also showcased the themes of how people can become unhealthily obsessed with beauty and would do literally anything to their bodies to try to achieve peak beauty, like surgeries and everything. I Feel Fantastic refers to to a short creepy video of an android singing a song in a mysterious household which i can't even show you because they copyrighted it they copyrighted this spooky ass song with just tts vocals and like they copyrighted it so that means i can't play this on this video or else i get shot on when people first stumbled upon this video of course, no context behind it. People were like, what the hell is going on here? Apparently, the backstory to this video was later found. Android was named Terra Tara or something and was created by a man named John Bergernon. And he first up, he first posted about the project back in 2001. He created the Android with the goal to sell her to be used for like security, entertainment, like some FNAF shit, you know what I mean? but then later rebranded her as a musical android programmed to sing any song you would program into her. He also sold a compilation of music videos featuring Tara on a DVD. And for years, Bergenon was in his own little bubble. Many people didn't know about the android and all that until the video got re-uploaded onto YouTube under the title, I Feel Fantastic along with a long description talking about how the story of the android can be compared to an ancient Greek legend. And after being uploaded onto YouTube, the video quickly gained a reputation as being one of the more unsettling videos on YouTube because Tara and her weird singing hit that spicy, 
uncanny valley zone and also because of the strange geometry of the house they were filming in and like mysterious shots of an empty field that were interlaced in between the video and of course the real horror of this video is the lack of context that this was given many people began to theorize the origins of this video and some people made up stories that the android was a was created by a serial killer who would dress up tara in the clothes of their victims um and like the empty fields could be a hint to where the serial killer would dump like the bodies in uh it was also theorized that the android killed the creator uh especially because when people found out about Burgeon they haven't been able to contact him for years the most likely reason is that John Burgeon simply retreated from the internet because he probably got harassment about the video and about Tara and this clip from YouTube explain perfectly perfectly encapsulate what this project is all about well, I just believe that this was John's side project he created this android and he recognized how creepy it was so he made it sing that creepy music and he made a creepy music video and he uploaded it to the internet. He put it on his website and somebody found it and put it on YouTube and that's that. I mean, come on, at one point the robot sings run, 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 leave. This is nothing more than somebody who made a singing robot, uploaded a clip of it on the internet and now everybody thinks that there's some sort of a serial killer involved. I mean, come on. Mariana Mortegard Glasgorv. This is referring to uh, urban legend surrounding a mysterious YouTube video clip which just features a mysterious YouTube clip of this guy just staring at the viewer all covered in red before it fades away with a close-up of him giving an ominous grin. Since it was uploaded back in April 2008, there has also been a creepypasta story attached to this video where it says that if you watch the full version of this video, you're gonna get haunted. Apparently, if you watch the full video, you tear out your eyeballs and then you mail it to the YouTube HQ. Q? Of course, this was later debunked to be fake. Like, what the fuck did you honestly expect? The guy in the video is actually Byron Cortez, who resides in the U.S. Virginia Islands. Here, here he is with a nice little smile. And the picture in the video was actually one of the photos used in a 2004 survey about marketing professionals. Professionals. And yeah, fake story. The video is a little unsettling if you think about it. And watching the full version isn't gonna make you rip your fucking eyeballs out to mail to YouTube. So this isn't really related to YouTube, but it's some deep web stuff that got really popular back when YouTubers were hyping that shit up into making it like the most demented and the disturbing thing you're gonna see. If you go on a fucking deep web, you're gonna die. So Blank Room Soup, also known as Freaky Soup Guy, it refers to this video of a man just sitting in an empty room eating chunky soup while two characters in mascot costumes start like rubbing his back and like the guy starts crying while eating the soup again the lack of context really makes up the horror of this video apparently people found out that the costumes that the mascots were wearing were costumes of ray ray it's his character created by raymond s percy and paw history and apparently this video was created by people who stole the costumes and wore it unknowingly after a Ray Ray show. Anyways, the video's eerie vibe and lack of context really conjured up the imagination of viewers into thinking that this is actually a snuff film from the deep web. Uh, the earliest available upload of this video was uploaded onto YouTube by Renaissance Men back in November 2005 titled Freaky Soup Guy and it garnered almost a million views. And this video has been discussed, explained, theorized by numerous sites and uh, YouTubers. And there's also plenty of other Ray Ray videos where apparently they like reenact kidnappings and stuff. But the more likely tale of this video is that it's probably fake. Lisa Lamb. I am not sure how this relates to YouTube at all, but it is an interesting crime story that a bunch of true crime YouTubers have talked about. So on February 19th, 2013, the body of Canadian tourist Elisa Lamb was recovered from a large cistern atop the main on stay hotel in downtown Los Angeles where she had been a guest. She was last seen survive on January 31st and was reported missing by her parents on February 1st. Her body was first discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. Interest in Lamb's disappearance increased on February 13th when the Los Angeles Police Department released 
for security footage of her behaving erratically in a hotel elevator on the day she was last seen alive. That elevator video soon went viral, especially when an autopsy performed on Lisa Lam couldn't determine the cause of her death. The Los Angeles County Coroner's Office just ruled the death as an accident, with bipolar disorder being a significant contributing factor to that. Guest on the main on stay sued the hotel over the incident, and you know, when this happened, a lot of people were talking about how, like, how did she end up in that cistern on the hotel and everything? Was it a murder? Was it an accident? Was it a suicide? Like, who knows? Olivier de Sagazan is a French artist, painter, sculptor, and performer. And his most famous art performance is Transfiguration, which he created in 1998 and did more than 300 performances of this art performance in 25 countries. And to just describe the performance, it basically just him it's basically just him changing identities on stage from a man to an animal and from an animal to he like use clay to like form animals he pierces he obliterates he unravels layers of his face in a frenzied search to find a new essence a new form and you know because of how popular his uh performance is you probably have seen it you know if you if you have you ever seen a video with like spooky black and white effects and like a shitty backstory of like a guy rubbing his face to like make things and it's like he was a prisoner of war after being subjected to the indescribable horrors of a 3 a.m. challenge with Slender Man, you know you're probably seeing that performance. It's just art, you know. It's nothing too scary or anything. Happy anniversary reverse to this video uploaded by this YouTube channel. It has some creepy guy in his basement laughing maniacally at like his little 240p flip phone camera. And on the face of it, it is a little like spooky. Like, what is what's so fucking funny, dude? Like, why are you laughing that hard? You know? And like, some people thought initially thought this was about like like a divorce or something, or maybe he like murdered his wife. But here's some context onto the video and why it's actually a little creepy. Moira Murray was an American woman who disappeared on February 9th, 2004, after a car crash on Route 112 near Woodsville, New Hampshire, a village in the town of Haverhill. Her whereabouts remain unknown. She was a 21-year-old nursing student completing her junior year at the University of Massachusetts Amherst at the time of her disappearance. Many people speculate that this old guy actually made this video to celebrate the anniversary of Murray's disappearance eight years later, leading to many people believing that he was the one responsible for her kidnapping. The original channel that uploaded this video was called 112 Dirtbag. 112 of course refers to Route 112 where Mary had crashed her car before she disappeared and Dirtbag refers to when Murray's father publicly called whoever was responsible for her da his daughter's disappearance a dirtbag. Many people would discover this video and would conduct some internet sleuthing and detective work to find out who he is and if he's actually responsible for the disappearance. They did some good work. Turns out his name is Alden Olson, who resides in Massachusetts, the same state that Murray resided in. So police would then get involved with an investigation on Olson to find out that he had nothing to do with his kidnapping. Apparently he was just some crazy old guy who wanted to get views and attention. He even started a blog where he tried to solve Murray's case on his own. And some people think that he might have actually made this video to get some attention back on Murray's disappearance, which may have worked because we are talking about the disappearance 19 years later. 
Ooh, what if I told you? What if I told you that YouTube is actually a sentient AI? You watching this video right now, you just gave me all your information, all your fucking family, your bloodline, everything. So this is just another dumb claim that people think that YouTube is some sentient AI studying and calculating all the videos we're uploading onto this platform. Like, do they seriously want, does the AI seriously want to watch like five hours of the shitty videos that I make on this channel? And, you know, I can understand the spookiness, especially now that we have AI programs like ChatGPT and other high language models, but YouTube being an AI, I understand if the AI you're talking about is like the algorithm, like how people see these videos in the first place and the algorithms that we use to moderate comments and all that and to like optimize our search engine optimization, whatever. But do you just YouTube gaining a consciousness and just going fucking Terminator on us? It's probably not gonna happen. A channel named OO930 is a very strange and kind of twisted rabbit hole you can get yourself into. So apparently they're a YouTube channel that would upload cryptic videos where they would film girls on the street, like stalk girls and make like weird cooking videos. And like some of these videos include exploring summer night Night streets hookers uh, this video and girl talk too much and of course there's other way more disturbing videos on this channel that I can't showcase like how to transport a semi unconscious girl and dress the ladies screaming in a bath and then also sprinkling images of actual women getting kidnapped some of them way too disturbing to show on YouTube this is like some really weird creepo shit, like the videos of them just randomly stalking girls in public and everything. And many people who stumbled upon this channel were actually worried that this guy's actually like a kidnapper and that these videos are just him insinuating that he's just like scoping out, looking for victims. You gotta watch your back, stay home and all that. And some people also claim that the cooking videos that they make on this channel might actually be like him showcasing how he's a cannibal, like the meat was actually from the girls he'd kidnap and butcher up or something. Most people believe it's an ARG like why would an actual serial killer cannibal showcase themselves doing crimes on the internet to be fair there are a lot of dumb people on the internet who would film themselves committing crimes whether or not it's actually real or not this is kind of a spooky ARG whatever series it is because you know the videos do look kind of genuine like I don't think these are actresses that he hired to pretend to stalk I think he's actually doing this shit it's kind of fucked up hopefully it's just an ARG that they didn't get the popularity to get off the ground properly but there might be a chance as a real kidnapper and that is the darkest YouTube iceberg explained if you like what you saw don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel a little more. I'll see you guys next time.